Hello, everybody. It's about that time. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Grace Beer Reviews today. Hopefully this is going to be a big treat. Look at this great big bottle with the wax covered top. That usually means it's a once brewed beer or a special edition beer or something they've dipped in wax to charge you more money. That's the way I feel about it. Uh, I'm not a big fan of these wax covered beers. Uh, but a lot of brewers are doing it. This just goes to show you that uh, we got somebody standing at the end of the bobbing line dipping these bottles in wax. So we got to pay their salary. So we're going to charge you more money. The beer is under carbonation. Uh, the air is not going to get in unless we got a problem with the capping process. So they put that wax on there to charge you more money. And that's what they do. This is from Terrapin, and I will tell you right off the bat, Terrapin just sold out to the, the big guys, so I don't buy Terrapin beers anymore. My brother Rico sent me this. Uh, I used to buy Terrapin beers before they sold out. Now that I found out they sold out, I don't purchase them anymore. I don't support the big guys. All you, all you uh, people that send me these beers, I'm happy to review them, uh, but I am not going to spend my money on beers that are, are breweries that sell out to these big three. Of course, when they come flash all these thousands, if not whatever amount of money to you, it's hard to resist that. Uh, so, and it, it, it does help in a way. It increases their distribution. A lot of times they'll add a dating machine where they'll know how old the beer is and, and get a wider distribution for those guys. But uh, I'm not a fan of, the, of uh beer company selling out. Now if you want to get some help and, and, and let them buy into like 48-49% where you have controlling interest and they don't do a whole lot of changing or stuff. And I had one of my subscribers the other day so you just seem to mind doing the uh, Bourbon County Series beer. No, I don't mind selling them but I wouldn't buy them. If you want to send one to me like Rico does, uh, I'm happy to review it but I'm not going to spend my money on somebody that's sold out. They're traders as far as I'm concerned guys. And I'm happy to review whoever or whatever uh, somebody wants to send me. But if they've been, if they've sold out, uh, and a lot of people probably have a problem with that, man, so be it. But I'm not going to spend my money on a brewery. And there's breweries around here, Devil's Backbone just got bought out. I don't buy their beers anymore. And they're just like three hours up the road. I've been to their brewery. I've been to both of the breweries, the base camp and the outpost. I just don't, I don't buy them anymore. And it makes them very tasty beers, but... I don't buy beers from people that sell out, uh, especially when ABM Bev uh, uh, makes commercials slamming their nose at us guys that drink craft beer when they're trying to buy up as many as they can get their freaking hands on, and then thumb their nose on the commercials like I did at the Super Bowl last year, uh, talking about peach uh, craft beer, and they just bought out a, a brewery that produced it. I'm going, ah. but they have deep pockets; they can throw those thousands if not millions of dollars around uh, and they're buying up the craft beer not the craft beer but the uh, uh, craft beer supply stores now so places you buy your hops and and supplies from they're buying those up now so they're they're trying their damnedest to control the beer industry again so this is the uh, terrapin 2015 tira tiramisu who tiramisu who Malt beverage brewed with cocoa nibs with natural flavors added. 8.5% alcohol. And this may be a collaboration beer between Terrapin and somebody else. Brewed and bottled by Terrapin Beer Athens Company. Athens, uh, Georgia. So, I'm not sure if they collaborated on this one or not. I thought they did. But anyway, it's a great big bottle with wax on it. It means it's a pricey beer usually. So Rico, thanks my brother. I do appreciate you spending your hard-earned money on it. 
uh, and sending it to me. And I'm happy to review it, but I probably would not have bought it myself. Uh, this is a uh, uh, milk slash wheat stout, so that means they've used lactose in the brewing process, which usually makes it a lot sweeter. Uh, sugars, when you brew beers, any kind of fermentable sugar, the yeast will eat up, and a lot of times it makes it dry on the back end because it eats up all that sugar. When you use lactose in the brewing, it doesn't let the sugar, I mean the yeast, eat that sugar up because lactose is an unfermentable sugar. So it still stays sweet after the fermentation process. So, uh, commercial description on this one, guys. So this is an 8.5% like I said. I'll see if I can find the IBUs on this and see if it's available anywhere. It says, soak up all the flavors of our newest reserve series beer, Tiramisu, Tiramisu Hu Imperial Milk Stout, with all the attributes of a finely executed dessert, we have managed to create a beer that is layered with all the goodness you would expect from a succulent slice of Italian history. It says right here, the IBUs are 30. So we know what the IBUs are. Malt are two row, flaked oak, crystal 85, chocolate malt, D husk, caratha, three, and roasted barley. The hops are nugget. It says other ingredients is lactose, cocoa nibs, coffee, and vanilla. So they've used a little bit of coffee in this too. And this is a retired beer according to what I'm getting from Beer Advocate. It's got 2015 on the label. And technically that's all we need for a date. We got the vintage. So, and it's an eight and a half percent sweet milk stout. Would like to know whether it was done in January 2015 or December of 2015, just to know, you know, there's 12 months there. Uh, was it done in the beginning of 2015 or the end of 2015? I would just like to know that. The date is irrelevant on this style of beer. Completely irrelevant. But if they would put January 2015 on there, I'd let you know. If you're drinking it in December of 2015 or, or January of 2016, the beer is a year old already. But it's not going to hurt anything. The only thing I'm going to tell you, if they brew it with coffee, the coffee fades somewhat over time. So you probably wouldn't want to sell this one in 5, 10, 15, even 20 years. Because the coffee is going to disappear. So another reason why I'd like to see the month on the style of beer. So if it's got coffee added to it, you want to drink it within the first 3, 4, maybe even 6 months. But after a year, the coffee is probably fading substantially. If you had a... If you had two of them, and, and you drank one in January, the month it was put in, if that's what the month was, and one in December, you're going to notice more coffee in the one you drink in, in January than the one you, you did in December, because 12 months, that coffee is going to fade a little bit. So, enough about that. I've read you that. Let's go over here. Uh, it says, uh, food pairings, general chocolate dessert. That's all it says there. Let me get to knife out while I'm reading this. Glass Rider, Plank, Becker, Nautic, Tumble, Mug, Stein, Seidel. I'm using my favorite tulip glass today, guys. A solid beer glass. Let me get this wax cut so we can get into it. And get the knife in there and pop this top off there. Oh, yeah. That's what you want to see. It all come off in one piece like that. And it's got their typical green terrapin label on this one. A lot of times when they put the wax on it or it has foil on it, they'll use a plain Jane silver or black or, or gold cap. This one has the typical terrapin. Nice little hiss on this one. Very nice. And the wax is still trying to come off, so we want to get all that off of there before we pour it so it doesn't end up in our damn glass. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's why I hate this wax. The beer is under carbonation. Uh, the air is trying to get in. As long as you got a good cap on it, the wax is, to me, is irrelevant. It just adds cost to the beer, guys. It's my opinion, though. Well, we'll go right here. It says here, not recommended for extended cellaring, unless ABV extends average range. At eight and a half, it does extend past the average range, but it has coffee added. So you may lose some of that if you try to cellar it or if it's an older beer. It has 2015 on the label, so I already know this is January 17th of 2017. I don't know what month it was produced. It's all, I know already that it's at least a year old. And if it was done in January 2015, it's two years old. So that's why I want to see the month of there. You know, hardly ever you're going to get that added to the style of beer. They never tell you what month they brew it in. 
Sometimes they do, but most of the time they do not. Hardly any head on that pour. Very dark, pitch black, guys. I'm not getting any light whatsoever. Let's get a nose to it. I'm not getting any coffee on my nose, guys. A little bit of bittersweet chocolate, roasted malt. I'm getting like a maple syrupy smell to it, too. Nice sweetness. It smells pretty good. It does. Now, and, and like I said, they just got bought out. So I don't know if this beer was produced before they were bought out or after. That's good. Final beer of the evening for me. So let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Rico. It's got a, it's got a really nice nose to it. It really does. I am definitely getting some maple syrup in this, guys. Very nice sweetness to this. This is tasty. I will not lie to you. As much as I had to give a huge grade to somebody that sold out to ABMF, and I still do. I mean, I, I still love the Bourbon County series from Goose Island. Uh, I, I still have people send me those. I can't get them here. I still have people send me those. The barley wines and their coffees and the, uh, the regular ones. They make up several different versions of the Bourbon County series, and they're still pretty tasty. Uh, to me, everything is still produced from those guys in Chicago. It's still fairly tasty. But everything they moved from Chicago to New York, their 312 and their IPAs and all those, uh, I would not buy those beers, guys. Uh, they're very transitional. Uh, if you're just getting into craft beer, they're still tasty. But if you're a seasoned craft beer drinker, they're unimpressive. Wow, I'm getting so much maple syrup notes on this, guys. Pancake syrup, maple notes. Wow. That's pretty damn tasty, guys. I'll have to tell you straight up. It is a tasty freaking beer. Wow. That is delicious. A great final beer of the evening for here in January. A nice one to sip uh, by the fire or the gas logs or whatever. Or even this big of a bottle share with some friends or family, the other half or whatever. Very tasty beer. And this probably would go well with a nice chocolate dessert. I have given some notes of some chocolate in there. But I am not, I'm not getting a whole lot of coffee. Maybe we'll let it warm up here and see if I can get some coffee notes at the end and on the final chug and stuff. But... Not a big coffee influence here. So, uh, let me step on it and I'll come back and uh, see where it ends up. Alright guys, I'm back. I've been sitting on about 30 minutes or so. Very tasty. Now that it's coming to room temperature, I am getting some coffee notes on this. Probably not as much as I would have gotten if I knew exactly when it was put in the bottle and I had done it fresh. It does have 2015 vintage on it, like I said, uh, but I don't know when in 2015 it was done. Uh, and the coffee does fade over time on uh, on, on beers like this. So uh, I am still getting some, but I've got a feeling it's been a lot stronger coffee notes uh, fresh than it is here in January of 2017. So uh, I enjoyed this beer. It's a very tasty beer. And like I said, I'm not sure whether they were bought out before this beer was done in 2015 or after. Uh, not exactly sure, but it is a very tasty beer. Very nice roasty malt notes. I am getting some bittersweet chocolate along with uh, some uh, lighter coffee. The, the other half said it tastes to her like a, like a decaf coffee now at this stage. So uh, not a big, whopping, strong coffee note on this beer, but it is still there once it comes up to room temperature. I wasn't getting a whole lot when it was chilled out of the fridge, but now that it's come up to a little bit warmer, it is uh, it is there. So, and uh, a nice sweetness to it, the back end. A very delicious beer. I mean, uh, very impressive beer. I'll have to give it that. Even though I'm not a fan of these breweries that sell out. But this is a tasty beer. It really is. 
Still getting that strong maple syrupy notes on it though. Pancake syrup. Very delicious. Your great final beer of the evening. Final chug. Very well done, guys. It is. And when you see these wax uh, covered tops on these big bottles like this, usually it's going to be a tasty beer. 99.9% of the time, they know they got something good here. That's why they take the extra step and put wax on the top of it so they can charge you a little bit more, but they know they got a good beer. So, uh, to me, guys, it's a 9 out of 10. I would like to see them put a, a month along with that vintage so we know, like I said, uh, whether it was done in January of 2015 or June or July or even December of 2015. So you'll know uh, when the beer was done there. So you'll know, should I drink this fresh or fresh as I can get it because of the coffee that they've used? Because uh, you know it's going to fade over time. So, But it's still there. Once it comes up to room temperature, I can still taste it. But I got a feeling uh, if I had tasted the, the first month it was put in the bottle, the coffee notes would have been a lot stronger. So, 9 out of 10 for me, guys. Right down the middle, 95 for me. Uh, over to Beer Advocate, they say 93. Outstanding. And over to... Rate beer, rate beer says 98 overall and 78 to stop. So we got a 93 and a 98. And for our final check in, Untapped has it at 4.16. So A number from everybody there. Uh, delicious beer, very tasty. I don't, not sure you can still pick this up. Uh, I don't know when Rico bought this. Uh, uh, since it's a 2015 edition, I'm not sure it's still sitting on a shelf somewhere. But if it is, uh, like I said, if you're not wanting a whopping huge coffee note uh, on this beer, it is a tasty beer. It's a great wintertime beer. Uh, only, only thing I can say would make this beer better if it had been bourbon barrel aged or something, some kind of barrel aging on this. But it is tasty. I enjoyed it. I probably would buy this beer uh, if it wasn't too expensive. Uh, now that I know that they've been bought out, not so sure that I would actually jump in that line so uh, not a, as you know I'm not a fan of these guys selling out like that but it does not improve their distribution and a lot of times they'll get better dating uh, they'll get a dating machine and all that kind of stuff uh, just like uh, Three Floyds has done not Three Floyds but uh, Goose Island has done so uh, still tasty still tasty here in 2017 so I enjoyed it so if you've had this one from uh, Terrapin they're Terramisu who let me know what you think, guys. I enjoyed it. It was very tasty. Come back tomorrow. Let's take something out of the fridge. See you then.